You're probably an individual like me. You code, you shoot videos, and most of all, you want to do them at the same time. So once upon a time, you decided to purchase high-end i9 MacBook Pro for running both development tools and video editing softwares. You also skipped M1 MacBook upgrade, either because the benchmark results seem nearly identical or you're the personnel still thinks size matters. For whatever reason, M1 had its own problem with especially development. During 2021, you see Docker and your favorite dev tools started to support ARM64. You've also seen the videos showing M1 is capable of doing the same tasks, but with significant temperature difference. But if M1 performs better than i9, then what would be the right configuration for it? Do we still need that large memory size as i9 did? Most importantly, do I still have to pay over $3,000 in order to get my dev tools running smoothly? Is it an evolution or is it just another progress? In order to demystify this, I purchased M1 Pro with 16GB RAM and I want to know if it can outperform my 32GB i9 MacBook Pro. I'm going to make this video a two-part series. In the first part, I'll show you the visual difference and editing experience I have noticed. In the second part, I'll be more focused on development tools and see if they can outperform i9 MacBook Pro on new ARM64 architecture. I'll also cover the defects I've encountered including software, hardware, and attachments problem. First, let's start from their screen. On the left, I have 16-inch i9 MacBook Pro with 8-core 2.3 GHz base frequency and 32 GB RAM. On the right, we have newest 2021 14-inch MacBook Pro with 10-core processor and 16 GB unified RAM. From the specification, we know that the screen of 14-inch M1 Pro has higher density than 16-inch 2019 i9 MacBook Pro. Besides that, 2021 MacBook lineup claims to have promotion technology on it, which enables 120Hz refresh rate on its display. Surprisingly, browser-based screen frequency test shows both displays have the same 60Hz refresh rate. However, we still can notice the screen difference from simple cursor movements. The difference is more obvious when I put the clip in slow motion. Notice that I was using built-in trackpads all the time. This movement smoothness may not guarantee if you're using wireless mouth, if it's especially third-party one. Speaking of third-party attachments, I like to use Logitech MX Anywhere 3 with its buttons functionality modified. However, it randomly stopped working for a couple times. One possible cause for this could be the Logitech option software still under Intel-based architecture. Next up, let's take a look at how Final Cut Pro performs on each machine. All the footage in the project was taken by GoPro in 4K resolution 60 frames per second. And for Kodak, I choose Apple ProRes 422. Total up? I had roughly about two and a half hour footages like this. In total storage space that footage used 
is roughly 80 gigabytes. You can see the playback on upper screen starts to show up like a slideshow when I move the playback timeline. And I think I don't have to mention the temperature near touch bar and the fan noise this machine makes because it's been a known issue for a long time. Here, I'm using the exact same setting for a 14 inch MacBook Pro. Surprisingly, the Final Cut performance on 16GB 14-inch M1 Pro is even smoother than 32GB i9 MacBook Pro, and the temperature is definitely lower than i9 MacBook Pro. Note that 32GB i9 MacBook Pro is also equipped with Radeon Pro 5500 8GB graphics card. I can say this result very surprised me, so I did a little investigation to see why 8GB graphics card underperforms. Since two graphics cards have very different architecture, they cannot be compared to each other directly. However, we can see that M1 processor prioritizes too high efficiency cores all the time. So the machine can stay power efficient as long as possible compared to old model. Further, we can get some clue from the activity monitor, specifically from memory usage and CPU usage. You can see that the old model utilizes 400% of CPU power. And that was equivalent to utilizing power of four cores that we've seen in previous CPU monitor. Despite this i9 processor in MacBook Pro is advertised to have max turbo frequency of 4.8 GHz, however, the processor never could reach that frequency due to thermal throttling. Note that these experiments on both machines perform it while Docker is running. We also can see the Final Cut Pro on M1 chip occupied larger memory size than i9 did. However, it's only utilized 11 out of 16 gigabytes due to its unified memory nature. This gives us the user impression that M1 Pro manages memory better than i9. Additionally, I almost heard zero fan noise during editing. Before the end, I want to mention another software issue I have encountered. I don't know if you have used Better Snap Tool before. It's a software that delivers Windows-like window resizing experience, which I personally found more convenient. Since 2021 MacBook lineup introduced thinner bezel and thicker menu bar, if you want to maximize the window using Better Snap Tool, you have to drag the window all the way up to the top instead of the menu bar. So that makes our first part of this video. I hope you guys find this video helpful. In the next episode, let's find out how well M1 Pro can handle development tasks, especially for containerization tools like Docker and Kubernetes. I'll also update you on the issues I found on 2021 lineup. Please stay tuned and stay safe.